Alleged socialist candidate for Congress under the Democratic Party, Ocasio-Cortez, seems to have backtracked in a recent PBS interview where she has altered many of her pre-election positions. Cortez had previously said on May 14th that Gaza was under siege. It was an occupation. People were being killed. It was called a massacre where Israeli troops were murdering Palestinian civilians. And she said that any activist should feel the same way. But now, after a recent interview, she's decided that, she, no, she said that this is something she said as an activist, not something as a congressional candidate. In other words, her position has completely changed and she's no longer willing to be so righteous against Israel, which would be the right thing to do. It seems that her entire position in that regard has now changed. Now, this statement alone suggests that other positions that she will hold or that she did hold will no longer be valid now that she's trying to run for Congress. In other words, again, another example of you don't change the system, the system changes you. Now, prior to the PBS interview, Cortez had been promoted as a pro-Palestinian socialist. Of course, this is very strange coming from someone who decided to run for a party that has received over $5 million from the pro-Israeli lobby this year alone. So that's kind of a contradiction there, because you can't really claim to be pro-Palestinian while being part of one of the two major parties. Now, it's very obvious that she is not a socialist. See, she is a social democrat at best. A socialist seeks to overthrow capitalism, not someone who runs in the system, legitimizing the whole process by doing so, claiming they're going to, ch to change things, and then end up not actually having the ability to do so. I mean, this is a very well, <laughs> should be well, I mean, this is, this is a well done concept of socialism in general, which seems to be completely lost on first worldists. They seem to keep thinking that if you vote for the next Bernie Sanders, it'll change. If you vote for Obama, it's going to change. Well, it, it'll be this time, if you do with Cortez, it'll be different. I mean, the same thing with Occupy Wall Street, the same thing with every other bourgeois democratic you know, movement or personality that has come out, the same thing happens over and over again. And anybody who stands against it, and you don't have to be a third worldist to stand against it. You, If you're a Marxist or a socialist, you're supposed to be against it in general. They just get attacked as being too sectarian or you're ultra left. Now, apparently the communist idea of overthrowing capitalism is ultra leftist. I mean, that's kind of the point of the whole thing. Now, fake leftists are still running out and cheering her, going on, oh, she's going to do all the good stuff for us. She's going to give us, you know, all the Bernie Sanders free stuff. We're going to get the education. We're going to get the health care. And then when you bring up the whole Israel thing, they go, OK, well, that's really just a whole side issue. In other words, what we're looking at is actual first worldism. We're going to get all the stuff that we want. But, you know, that whole anti-imperialism thing that is, you know, the primary contradiction well, we're just going to shove that aside so that we get what we want and we don't really care that it's being paid for by the exploitation and the oppression and the murder of the third world. So it seems perfectly reasonable to me that first worlders would take on this position of just simply voting in someone who's going to give them all the nice, soft democratic reforms. That is the criticism that third worldism makes, that first world people are not interested in doing revolution. They're only interested in getting a few democratic reforms to make their lives better because they are already materially well off. That is not to say that there is not suffering in the first world, there's not exploitation in the first world or even alienation. We're not saying that and we never have. What I'm saying is this is another pure example of the lack of any significant revolutionary potential in the first world. People, the people that they claim are a class that is ready to revolt. And a lot of Marxists do claim this for some reason. Oh, there's going to be a revolution in America soon, which they've been saying for like a hundred years and hasn't happened. They keep saying, oh yeah, well, there is a potentially revolutionary class, but Every time those who at least have some idea or at least some concept of a class consciousness go into these things every single time, and guess what? Nothing ever changes. Thank you for watching. If you like this program, then please head over to my Patreon page and set up a monthly donation. It's your donations that keep this program running. Also, if you would like, please rate, comment, subscribe, and share in various social media.